Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chosen. Yes. Greetings and welcome. Each week, we read portions of True Family Values, which is biblical based and focuses on five major areas of kingdom building. And tonight, Dr. Michael Jenkins will present part two of Restoration of Marriage and Family. So please call your clergy contacts to join us. To help us begin, we will have Dr. Madeline Clark Harris, or I'm sorry, Dr. Madeline Clark Alexander, who is the founder of House of Judah Empowerment Outreach Ministries to lead us in prayer. Dr. Madeline Clark Alexander. Amen, to God be the glory. We're transitioning into this Alexander, right? Hallelujah, God, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise for us to come to be able to come together on tonight, dear Lord, Father God. We thank you, God. We put you first, Heavenly Father, for you and you alone, dear Lord, Father God, has called us together for such a time as this, dear Lord. You have given us authority, dear Lord, Father God, and as we walk in that authority and power and speak truth to power, dear Lord, Father God, to change the world, we thank you, God, for worthy is the Lamb of God who is in our midst. So Lord, as we move forth, dear Lord, Father God, we pray a blessing upon Reverend Jenkins as he delivered this Amen. message with such power, with the teaching, dear Lord, Father God, let our eyes and ears and hearts be anointed to receive what thus saith the Lord. And dear Lord, Father God, with all power and authority that true parents have placed upon our shoulders, dear Lord, Father God, let us go out into the world to change the world, to make a difference, dear Lord, Father God, for you and you alone are worthy to be praised for this presentation and this hour and this 24th first century, dear Lord, Father God, you have spoken your word and you have made it clear. So let your people be able to sup at the dining table and eat what thus saith the Lord. Father, we give you all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name, amen and adieu. Amen and adieu. Thank you so much, Dr. Alexander, for your beautiful and anointed prayer. Thank you so much. We will now hear a special message from Dr. Mark Abernathy, who is the co-vice president of the American Clergy Leadership Conference. Dr. Mark Abernathy. Hello, everyone. Hello, family. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing well. I'm believing uh, God still for a great breakthrough in 21 and you got to speak it in the air every day. I just want to encourage many of you um, on some ideas that I've thought about this past few weeks, especially today. Um, I was asked to uh, kind of encourage some people on how can we reach Christian pastors? What can we do to engage um, uh, those around us um, that we are trying to get involved with, with understanding the blessing and, and understanding who true parents. Back in the day, uh, and I don't know how long we did this, uh, father asked the family members to uh, leave the Unification Church, embed themselves into the Christian um, a church. And uh, many of them that did this and became members and became part of the food given out or whatever what you do um, of the church, of the Christian church, these, these ministers begin to embrace these families. And guess who you're looking at today? a family in Mark Abernathy that was embraced by several family members that came and became part of our church. And man, they would work with us and help us with things around there and give out our food and help us in a lot of areas. This, see what we forget is, I think what the unification uh, members are forgetting, and most of you remember these days, is that when you served the other Christian churches, this is what enlightened them on how powerful your work was and how you was living for the sake of others and how you were serving um, your generation. I encourage you to move back in there and embed yourself in these uh, churches and serve. We was this past week with a mega pastor in Memphis that a family member, well, two or three family members embed themselves in this church. And on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, they're at the church, they're in the food pantries, and they're helping make that church a better community church. By doing that, this brother has engaged ACLC and now is ready to move into a summit, going to be with us in a summit in, in August, 
in Dallas, and he's going to, I mean, I'm looking forward to greatness that happens there. As you know, that America is in need of change. We already know this. So you can't, you can't go into uh, either a Christian pastor or a Christian home or a leader and tell them that it needs change. They know this. It's like telling a, a drunk he's a drunk. They know this stuff. We got to show them something that they, are, that they don't know. And one of the things we need to show them is that they understand that their own homes, even in the Christian homes, they're in disarray. The homes are in disarray. So we must show by way of the blessing how to bring hope and respect back to the family. This is what we've got to do. So we've got to go and bed ourselves with these people and then show them how to bring hope, which brings life, and then respect back to into the family. By doing this, it helps us until we get mom and dad unified on one page. The family, the family cannot move or be restored unless mom and dad is restored and they are doing the right thing. How can you get your family into the fold as well? The whole family working together brings restoration. When they begin to see mom and dad and the children bringing that whole family package together, that's what brings the restoration into the home. And one of the things that most of us in here on this uh, call knows about is, is being fruitful, being fruitful until you can really understand the revelation of fruitfulness, which is self-perfecting you. You've got to self-perfect yourself. You've got to individually perfect yourself so that you can be mature until you become perfected in that mode. You, you're not going to have a husband and wife connected together. The children are not going to be connected together. So I encourage you, when you, you are running this process uh, um, under perfection and being fruitful and multiply and living this uh, three great blessings, when you move into the homes of the Christianity or into the churches and you're demonstrating this perfecting living life, this impresses Christian pastors and people around you to want to engage this. This is not hard. This is an easy tool to deal with. I've got many tools that we'll be talking about over the next months that will help Dr. Rouse and I will be giving you ideas, and little, little nuggets that can help us during uh, this process. But go back into the Christian home, take them to dinner and lunch, get involved with them. Are they doing a food give out? Are they, when do they have church? Go be part of the church, get involved, let them know, I want to be part of what's going on. When they see you do this, they want to see what you've got. And I'm telling you, we can bring revival. And I'm looking forward to a great time. Love all of you. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Abernathy. We feel so inspired by your message. It's very powerful. And yes, we will do it and revive America. Thank you so much. And um, anytime during the presentation, if anyone has any questions or comments, please type them in the chat box. And we will try to address them at the end after this presentation. So please type away in the chat box if you have any questions and comments. And um, yes. And so now we will now introduce the presenter for this evening, um, Dr. Michael Jenkins, who is American Clergy Leadership Conference National Co-Chair Emeritus, will present to us tonight the continuation of session four of the True Family Values of Restoration of Marriage and Family. Dr. Michael Jenkins. Thank you, thank you, ACLC family and pastors throughout America. I want to give special thanks to Dr. Mark Abernathy. I really am grateful for his message tonight. I always learn from Reverend Abernathy because he knows how to reach the body of Christ. He knows how to embrace the pastors and how to really help them really take the next step for receiving uh, new wine, which uh, Jesus always said we should put in new wineskins. And he gives a lot of, of new inspiration and, and understanding as he lives it. He don't, doesn't only teach it, but he lives it. And he's all about uh, receiving Jesus' grace as uh, we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And he knows that this blessing led by pastors expands that grace to your family. It covers your family, covers your, your married couple with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit covering. I want to thank our co-chairman, our national co-chairman, Dr. Luan Rouse, and his wonderful, wonderful bride, uh, Minister Marie Rouse, who also 
uh, is the overseer for the national overseer for the women in ministry of ACLC. And I, my wife is blessed to be able to work with her uh, in that capacity. And my wife works as co-chairman of ACLC Women in Ministry. I'm on the National Executive Committee of ACLC. I'm very grateful to uh, uh, really support and, and learn from the leadership of Dr. Luan Rouse and also his co-chairman, Dr. Chung Shik Yong. Uh, we had a wonderful time in Atlanta this week. We were in Mark's hometown. And I'll tell you one thing, he is the pastor, not only of the nation, but he's also pastor of that city. And uh, we had some wonderful meetings there and especially uh, many prominent pastors around America uh, from all sizes of churches are coming to understand now is the time. We feel it in our hearts. Now is the time. Now is a special time, but it's not an unusual time. It's a biblical time. The Bible tells us very clearly there's going to be tribulation in the end times. How many of you believe we're in the end times? Everyone. Everyone I talk to. You can't have this kind of situation going on in the world, in the world and it not be biblical. It's a biblical prophetic conclusion of what God had already told us would happen. But it's also a time for the people of God to come together. And I'm just so excited to share this with you today. I also want to share with you that uh, we really are so grateful. I, I always teach from the King James Version of the Bible. This is my Bible. The Thompson Chain Reference is my fa favorite. But the Bible is the truth of God, the Word of God, and it is the Holy Word of God. And that's why what we've discovered here, what Jesus revealed to Father and Mother Moon, is just he unfolded the Scriptures with other scriptures. It's amazing. The Bible has everything in it that we need, but we need the light of the Holy Spirit, the light of God's love and wisdom and the, the uh, anointing of Jesus to allow the scriptures to light up other parts of the scripture. And that is contained in this, this book is called the Exposition of the Divine Principle. And what's the divine principle? It's the principle in the word of God. It's the principles in the Bible. Like love your enemy, that's a principle, right? Love God and love your neighbor. These are fundamental, eternal principles. So the divine principle, really, this is an exposition of the divine principle. Where's the divine principle? It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, but some anointing has to come to unlock the principles because Jesus said in John 16, 12, I have many things to share with you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And that's a time I believe we're in. We're in a time when all truth is being unfolded. So it's not that we were supposed to know 2,000 years ago or 1,000 years ago or even 100 years ago. It wasn't the time. But when Jesus said that the spirit of truth will come and guide you into all truth, you know, guide you into all truth, you know, then that is the time we're in. That's the Holy Spirit. That's why if you look at the organization behind this that Father and Mother Moon founded, what's it called? The Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. That's what this is all about. We want you to be part of this Holy Spirit Association. We don't want you to join another church. You've got your church. But we want the Holy Spirit to bring the body of Christ together to fulfill Jesus' prayer in John 17, 21. What was that prayer? Everybody knows it. Jesus prayed that all may be one. All believers should come together. And that's the time we're living in. So I'm honored. I'm very honored by Dr. Rouse to invite me to present part two of the restoration of marriage and blessing. I'm going to just start very quickly with a short review of the founding spirit that is in the Bible of the purpose of life. So I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Madeline Clark Alexander, a blessed couple in the, as a Christian pastor and leader together with her husband, Dr. Dr. Alexander in Indianapolis. Uh, Dr. Madeline Clark Alexander, if you could uh, please read the scripture of Genesis 128 for us. Amen. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. 
Genesis 1, 28. Amen. Beautiful reading. God gave Adam and Eve the responsibility to fulfill the three great blessings. And here it is in Genesis, to be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. God bless them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. Thank you for that reading, Dr. Alexander. And I'll call on you again. Uh, we want to understand why did God give this model? And God, it says in the scripture also, that God created man in his own image. Male and female created he them. Amen. Can I get an amen out there? Male and female created he them. So when we look at the be fruitful, it means to be mature. A mature person is one who studies and, and meditates on the word of God and then practices it with their life. And then it becomes one in their hearts. You start to feel stuff if you experience it. You can't just understand the truth intellectually and, and really have the fullness of truth. You have to experience it in your heart. In other words, you're told by Jesus to love your enemy. That's good. And that you believe that, that's good. That's also edifying to the mind. But only through practicing it with our body and seeing an en enemy become a friend, then you really feel it in your heart. Amen. I know that Dr. Rouse knows about this. He's dealt with a lot of people in this world as a Methodist pastor. And he's also turned so many of them away from the darkness into the light. They were once lost, but now they're found. When you experience that, then you feel the sense of God's maturity in your heart. Then the second blessing, multiply. That means to build a family. So when a mature man who feels the word of God through their practice and a mature woman who is totally co-equal. Notice this is not a top-down thing that this is God and man's next and woman's down here. No. God, man, and woman. Man and woman are on the same plane. They're different, yes, but they're complementary. They're complementary. It's a beautiful thing. Man and woman are meant to come together based on God's love and truth and form a family of fidelity, loyalty, and filial piety, filial love for God, and then form a harmonious family, a society, nation, and world. This is the fundamental purpose of life. God's plan, the three great blessings. And finally, if we're mature people of God, think about this. If you're really truly mature, why would God not want to open up all the secrets of the creation to us? There's many more secrets of creation. You know, I know that people, when they had the railroads going through America in the 1800s, felt like, wow, it can't get better than this. We don't even have to ride our horses anymore. We can go 500 miles on a train. Man, this is it. We have arrived. This is like... It doesn't get better than this. Uh, but they didn't know there was more to nature to be unfolded, unlocked. And if we're really harmonious people with God's heart, God's loving heart for everybody, then those secrets of creation are used to build a harmonious world. In other words, it takes atomic energy. Is atomic energy bad? No, it's not bad. It's actually very good. It's a, it unlocks enormous power from just a small number of atoms. But if it's used for good, it can build a good world. If it's used un, you know, in an ungodly way, then it can hurt people. That's why be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. So our session today is on restoration of marriage and family. Restoration of marriage and family has to do with fulfilling the second and third blessing. And in order to fulfill the second and third blessing, multiply and have dominion over the earth, Jesus anointed Father Moon to carry on his mission. So. Dr. Alexander, if you could read again. In Revelations 19 and 7, we read, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Revelations 19 and 7. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. That's the time we're living in. Let's talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus clearly prophesied, this is Mother Moon's words, Jesus clearly prophesied that he would return to host the marriage supper of the Lamb. What does this mean? It means that Jesus will return to form a family and become the true parents of humankind. What does that mean? Jesus can work through us to form families of God. That's what it really means. Jesus will create in us true parents. 
So he anointed Father Moon and Mother Moon to be true to God and one with God. With the covering of the Holy Spirit, they become anointed to be true parents, not only to their children, but to their society, to their church, to the nation and world. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus is passing that anointing through Father and Mother Moon to all pastors to become true parents, true parents to your family, to your church, your community, and whatever level of heart you want to take. If you want to take all the responsibility to have the heart of God for all the world, that means you're going to end up loving the whole world. Because what does scripture say? It says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth on him shall be saved, shall not perish, but shall be saved. Wow, it's amazing. That's why the world level of love comes from God. That's why this means the marriage supper of the lamb, Jesus is to reform a family, a true family. And all of us become true families. And finally, mankind becomes a true family of God. Dr. Alexander? To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Revelation father, 3 and 21. Thank you. Revelation 3, 21. Isn't this amazing? This is amazing. The word of God. It's just, and that's why we want pastors to come together to study with us. Why? Because many of these teachings that we assembled for ACLC came from pastors' forums where 10 or 12 or sometimes a little more sit down together and we pray together and we study together and the anointing comes forth because every pastor's had a different journey in the word of God. Not all of us had the same journey and certain verses were there were dormant for us. And then suddenly we read over them, but suddenly have you ever had that when you're preparing for a sermon, <laughs> suddenly a verse comes to life because the anointing comes. So that's what happened. The scripture says to him who overcomes, who is that? Anyone, anyone that overcomes and truly becomes absolutely one with Jesus, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. He doesn't say, Jesus is not saying, and by the way, this is Jesus' words in Revelation. Jesus says, you will sit with me on my throne, not at my feet or not at the right of my throne. No, with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne jesus is the model jesus is the pattern we're in a new age now this age is prophesied in the scriptures these are the end times but they're not an end times in terms of just destruction it's also a time of restoration and what does that mean that means that we're not just holding on to jesus and just worshiping him and just believing on him and then we're just so grateful that he just takes care of everything. No, he's passing on to us. You, Jesus can't take care of everything without us picking up our own cross and following him. He who would come after me, let him pick up his cross and follow me. If you don't follow the word of Jesus all the way through to responsibility, you'll miss. You'll miss. You can still be filled with grace and saved, but you won't become that mature son and daughter of God. You have to pick up the cross and follow him. That's what Jesus said. If anyone would come after me, let him pick up his cross and follow me. Wow. Wow. That's what got me really excited and moved because I started to feel, wow, there's more. There's more that Jesus wants to teach us now. And that is if we overcome and really carry the cross that God gives us, whatever it is, whether it's a big church, small church, or it's a big ministry or whatever kind of cross, it's a cross we bear for the sake of mankind, but it's also a cross of true love. So that's why, uh, Dr. Alexander, Restoration of Marriage and Family, Jesus anointed Father Moon. But the anointing which you have received from him, Jesus, abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you, you will abide in him. First John 2 and 27. Wow. What does Jesus say in the scripture? Those who love me will what? Keep my commandments. In other words, there's a responsibility here. Restoration of marriage and family can not only take place just by the grace of Jesus. It also occurs by the responsibility that Jesus gives us. And that's why when we're responsible, 
and those who love me will keep my commandments. In other words, we got to work on it. We got to work on it. And the anointing which you have received from Jesus, pastor, do you receive an anointing from Jesus that abides in you? And you do not need that someone teach you because as the same anointing teaches you, you will abide with him and not been, abide in him. Something can happen where you transition. And I see Dr. Abernathy going in that realm. I see Dr. Rouse and Dr. Alexander. I see uh, Dr. Glovini, Glovinia, Dr. Glovina. Uh, Williams and so many other pastors that are here tonight you're transitioning into that anointing where all of a sudden it's not like you have to have somebody else come you've already got Jesus and you've already got the anointing and somehow you come to the place where you just move with Jesus and that's what Father Moon experienced that's why expanding upon Jesus victorious foundation Father Moon was anointed to complete the second and third great blessings that were lost through the fall God bless Father and Mother Moon's marriage, anointing them as true parents of mankind. Thus, true parents are restoring the second blessing and giving us the physical salvation we lost during the fall and restoring us back to God's lineage. John 14, 12, Dr. Alexander. Jesus said, Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater work, greater things, excuse me, greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. John 14, 12. Greater works, greater works, Dr. Rouse. Greater works. In other words, when you have that anointing, Jesus doesn't want us to be confined. He he wants the blessing to expand. He wants everything to expand. Greater works, greater things than these. The works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things. That doesn't mean we're doing something greater than what Jesus brought through salvation. Not like that, but you're expanding it. It's expanding. It's beautiful. So God anointed true parents through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They have become the true parents to the world. Why? Because Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the spiritual true parents. Jesus and the Holy Spirit were also one with God, right? And then they brought that anointing to Father and Mother Moon. So Jesus and the Holy Spirit are spiritual true parents. Now think about this. To be born again, don't you have to receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible says you must receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are together as one. And it's like the Father and Mother. Jesus is, is our our everlasting father prince of peace mighty counselor mighty god and the holy spirit is also that comforter that comforter that really comforts and and edifies us and strengthens us in times of great need we need both that's why jesus and holy spirit are true parents and they want to embody that on earth that's why they must anoint someone to take that role of true parents substantially and pass it on to every pastor. So you become the embodiment of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So God anointed true parents through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Clergy couples are called to expand God's grace to the marriage and family. Wow. So this is what's happening with the clergy couples in the ACLC movement. We have a beautiful movement right now that's growing in which over 120 pastor couples have now receive this anointing to stand up and become true parents by going through a 40-day period of prayer. Just like Jesus fasted 40 days, we do a special prayer for 40 days in which we remain holy and pure and abstinent. And we only, we stay one with our spouse, but also we're praying to God the whole time. And then at the end of that 40 days, we go three-day course to also renew our vows before God and stand up proclaiming that we will become Jesus embodiment, Holy Spirit embodiment. We will become true parents to the family, the church, and the nation. So the blessing of marriage, let's talk about the blessing of marriage. Holy wine ceremony is something that is uh, brought to us. It's also done with juice, holy juice, and the blessing of marriage ceremony, holy matrimony. Let's look at the holy wine ceremony. So when you look at Holy Communion, you understand very clearly the grace of Jesus is given to all individuals who believe in him. Jesus said we should do Holy Communion in remembrance of him. Luke 22, 
19, do this in remembrance of me. So what did Jesus say the wine represented? It represented the blood and the bread represents the body. So why, do, why did he have that uh, communion at the Last Supper? Why? Because it has to do with lineage. It has to do with becoming one with Christ. You're supposed to be the flesh of Christ. You're supposed to be one with his flesh. And also, you're supposed to have the lineage of God, the lineage of God. And Jesus didn't pass on the blessing at that time because Israel couldn't understand him. So there was no foundation for him to bless the marriage and the family. So Jesus did not bless the marriage and the families, but he promised that he would come again and had conduct the marriage supper of the Lamb. So why do we do this? To remember Jesus Christ, to remember our bodies should be the holy temple of Jesus Christ, and that the blood lineage is very important, the blood lineage. And also because of the blood lineage, the blood which he shed on Calvary cleansed us. It's a cleansing blood. It's a, it covers the sin. It washes away the sin. All who believe on him are covered through the atonement of Jesus Christ. Dr. Jenkins? You're, you're frozen, Dr. Jenkins. Oh, I. He'll probably come back. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he does. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Dr. Jenkins, please unmute. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now through the anointing of true parents. So when you're a pastor anointed by Jesus, you're the true parents. And now what do we believe? Reverend Abernathy can tell you, Dr. Rouse, we all can share this. Dr. Alexander, Dr. Glovina, all these pastors that are here tonight. It's so wonderful to see you. But one thing is that when I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I am saved. I'm bought and purchased by the blood. But at the same time, can I vouch for my son or daughter? Or can I vouch for my wife? Can I say, well, don't worry about her. I believe, so she's covered. No, the grace is only going to cover the individual. But now a new era has dawned. That's why Jesus said, put new wine into new wineskins. Because we have to open up to understand. This is the time where that grace now extends to the husband and wife. Because to rebuild the family, that husband and wife have to be cleansed of any connection or any accusation or claim by the dark side. And that's why when brothers and sisters, when we pray about this and think about this, what happens when a Christian man, a Christian woman is born again, and then we have children, still somehow that claim is still there. The children have to be baptized. They have to be born again. Why does a husband and wife that have been forgiven of sin still have children that have some claim. Well, we'll get to that later. But if you study with the ACLC pastor's forum, you'll see it. It's in the scripture. And then once that blessing comes, then that washes away the family claim. The Lucifer has no claim over the children or the family. He has no claim. Uh, that's why the couple now have the grace and protection of Jesus and the Holy Spirit as they are gra together grafted. So, Dr. Alexander, go ahead and read Father Moon's words. Okay. The Holy Wine has the same meaning as the Holy Communion did for receiving Jesus. In Holy Communion, you eat bread and drink wine, symbolizing Jesus' flesh and blood. This means that since man fell, he must receive a new body. In the same way, this Holy Wine ceremony is done because fallen man has to go to in the direction opposite that of the fall. Reverend Sam Young Moon. Amen. Thank you. So the blessing of marriage ceremony, holy matrimony. After the holy wine ceremony, a condition has been made that we step into the lineage of God as a as a blessed couple. It's, and we're and and once you step through this holy wine ceremony, think about this. God no longer sees you as individuals. He sees you as his completed image, male and female. That's why we celebrate. 
Many pastors here also have gone through the course of having the blessing of marriage. It's a beautiful thing. God no longer sees you as an individual. You are God's embodiment. You are God's temple. But God is, you know, his image is male and female. So God can't be completely adjusted until his temple is male and female bound together. So let's look at the blessing of marriage. There's holy conditions that we're doing through our pastor summits. And that's not, that's not the pastor's forum. The pastor summits, Dr. Rouse and Dr. Young are bringing throughout this nation with Dr. Hernandez, um, Reverend Mark Hernandez. We thank you as a secretary general of this great and executive director of this great ACLC movement. We're going all over the country. We're going to come to your city soon. And what we do is these steps. We give the education like we're sharing today, the holy wine ceremony. And then there's an offering of thanksgiving, a small condition of your, you know, substance, give of your, of your substance, and, and then the blessing of marriage, and then chastening ceremony, 40-day holy separation, three-day ceremony. And then the marriage blessing. We have a basic content of the pledge we make is we will be faithful to God and to each other becoming true parents to our family and community. We teach our children before marriage and after purity before marriage and fidelity after marriage. And we honor God in all situations. So that's our conclusion for today. We want you to go through these steps with us. I wanna thank Dr. Rouse again and all the pastors that are here. Uh, God bless you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, so much Thank for your you. presentation you on Restoration Marriage and Family. We will now hear from Dr. Luan Abram Rouse, who is the ACLC National Co-Chairman. Dr. Luan Abram Rouse. Thank you very much, Young Soon. And if you will, please unmute Dr. Abernathy, who will be joining me. And I'd like to thank Dr. Michael Jenkins for spending last Monday and also again today with us doing his schedule, which is just like a 24 seven schedule. He's always available for God, Jesus Christ, true parents and for us. We thank you Dr. Jenkins for all of the tremendous work that you are doing, not only within the faith community specifically, but you are working for us in society with the political leaders, making sure that our communities are made better. We appreciate you. Thank Marie you. and I love you dearly. As you were speaking tonight, she was saying in the background, we love the Jenkins and we do. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Dr. Abernathy. Yes, sir. Uh, it's so good to have you with us tonight. And I believe you'll be joining us next Monday night when you and I I have an opportunity to talk even further about this. But tonight, I just want to zero in on a point that Dr. Jenkins was making. This blessing is not an ordinary blessing of a marriage ceremony. This blessing, this holy marriage blessing extends itself to make sure that ourselves are brought back into the original will of God. How might that be? Um, it's through the process of the, uh, uh, going through the process of the holy wine and, and all that. But the, the beginning starts with the revelation of the three great blessings. You've got to understand creation. You've got to understand what God's ideal was. Uh, for Christianity, we struggled because we didn't know that, you know, we felt like it had, we, uh, you know, obviously Jesus did give atonement for, uh, for, for, some, had to atone uh, for some sin, but, and so we, we thought this was the only hope, but we realized that that brought spiritual salvation to us, that there was a, another component to this, which was through the understanding of creation and the blessing. Uh, and realizing that 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 coming through fruitfulness uh, to that perfected state, so that you can pro procreate, produce uh, good 
Because Jesus said a good tree only bears good fruit, a bear, a bad tree only bears bad fruit. So you've got to restore that lineage. And the only process that that is we could do this by is going back and restoring what Adam and Eve lost at the garden. And that is going through the blessing, um, through the holy wine blessing, and then progress more in understanding God's word and how to do this. This is why that the family is uh, struggling today, uh, the husband and wife battling and fighting, because in Matthew, the Bible says, and the two shall become one. This is where our problem lies. The two shall become one flesh, but it's not that. We have become separate checking accounts separate lifestyles we're living our life so opposite that um, there's not unified so when you should when you see me at all times you should see my wife Edna and that you should see when you see Edna you should see me that brings completion in the blessing of the couple only way you can become perfected through Christ and is is through the through the couple and that so we've got to restore the couple back and if the couple is not right the children are not going to be right and then that's another lesson to deal with our lineage that the, our lineage won't be right so we got to restore our lineage after we have restored our family and our children and our couple then when we walk into our world we're walking into our world a completed blessed central family too many people are saying, I'm a blessed central family, but it doesn't show in their life. Their husband and wife couple are fighting. They're separated. They're not, you know, they're, they're, they're disconnected, dysfunctional. And then you say, well, how about your children? Dysfunctional, messed up. That, that doesn't mean they agree with you, that, but they're still in the house or with you. And this is so important to bring perfection, Dr. Rouse, into our, the blessing so that when we, when we move forward, people see a true whole picture, a whole blessed couple. Dr. Abernathy, we're journeying across America to go into every state, and we're doing subregion by subregion. We held two events in subregion two recently. But beyond the pastor summits, you and I have visited Memphis. I visited Detroit with Bishop Smith. You and I are going to be doing more visitations to various places. People are really becoming energized by this. In his closing, Dr. Jenkins mentioned some of the steps that are important. And we can talk more in depth about them next week. But I'd just like to bring up a few that he mentioned tonight because it's important for people to really be aware of the facts of what's happening. And we're not coming with facts of defense of any people, but we're coming with facts about what is transformative for the people of God. A few of those steps that I mentioned was one, education, holy wine, uh, offering of thanksgiving, and then it goes to the blessing of the marriage ceremony. It wasn't the marriage ceremony then trying to correct people afterwards. But this education process, this holy wine ceremony, can you speak to those, the significance? Um, I, began, I began part of this when I was 24 or 26. And um, I, I struggled to understand the, the lingo and the process of how this worked, obviously trying to do it on my own. And um, once I began to read the divine principle, I still struggled a little bit. I, I did it with tears. I did it. I struggled to really try to understand. And it wasn't until I had uh, somebody come into my life and, and help me really open the book to me. You know, there was a man in the Bible that was struggling to understand about Christ. And Philip uh, went to him and said, understand what you're reading. And he said, how can I without somebody showing me? And so he began to show him in the word what he needed to do. And he said, well, my goodness, here's water. Let's just do what I need to do now. This is what's got to happen is we've got to have the right people at, uh, administering the right medicine, the spiritual uh, uh, antidote 
at that moment that these people are needing this. And education is so vital in this. We've got so many bishops that spent 30 years teaching in universities and teaching all over, yet their f- families are falling apart. We've got, we can go to the moon and come back. They're going in the morning to the, to the space, but yet they can't even stay together and communicate as a family. They're get, actually the guy that's leaving in the morning divorced his wife not too long ago. So they, they did the basics of the important thing that transforms the life of our world and family. So goes our world. The, 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 the ruin of our nation begins in the home of our people. So it's education on the why, the blessing. And I am so adamant about understanding the three great blessings and what went wrong, what caused all this, and understand it biblically. So that when I sit down with my children, I say, oh, no, no, this is where the problem happened. And we restore that part. And then when you go into the, I think the other thing you said was the uh, uh, blessing. um, Ceremony. uh, Ceremony. Yes. Um, that That is an educational component by itself that they need to symbolically see something. This new generation we got, it's all about showing them. We need to show them. That, that they need to see, see what you're doing here. She's taking half of it. You're taking half of it. And the, together, the two are, at, that makes it one. And that as you make it one, then you, then you make yourself work together so that that becomes one. See, God says, I will bless you abundantly, but you've got to take responsibility sometimes about this yourself. God has given us salvation. Jesus brought salvation, but he said, look, at you've got ownership to take, responsibility, and that responsibility is to teach your lineage, teach your family the three great blessings, and what should I do to change this? It's symbolic um, uh, process that literally, transform the blood lineage spiritually to the the family of God and the lineage of God and makes us a true blessed central family. Yes, please uh, unmute uh, Dr. Jenkins before I pray. I want to ask Dr. Abernathy to make another uh, brief response and then I want Dr. Jenkins to give a summary statement. Uh, Dr. Abernathy here, and what, what I have found to be so significantly important for where we are right now as Christian pastors, uniting with Dr. Jenkins and others as Christian unification members, pastors, all of the work that they do, is now, you know, when I call people and ask them to stand before an officiating couple and ask the officiating couple that takes the elements, the wife to the officiator, uh, male officiator, who now gives to the wife, the representative couple, and she takes that with two hands, bows to her husband. And as you stated, takes half, give the other half to him. He bows to her, drinking all of it, bows, give back to her. And she bows, then gives back to the officiating wife. And the ceremony goes on. We're not stopping now with them even giving an offering of appreciation, Thanksgiving. But we are renewing some vows for many, having others come into their marriage ceremony vows. We're, we're taking them with the chastening rod. Then we're asking them to go into 40 day separation before they have a three day ceremony. That's an important factor that we're bringing right now. That's I want true. you to speak to that 40 day, three day and I, then I want Dr. Jenkins to give us a, a summary statement of how all of this restores. Dr. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, we struggled a few years before we did this because I'm, uh, my wife's really true understanding for her 
she struggled with the big picture. But as we continued to pray and stay focused and kept an open mind, boy, this came very real. This is a spiritual moment. This, I mean, I, I take this as salvation. That you've got to, the only way that you can transform a a life is you've got to s- separate it and sanctify it, restructure, restore the mother, the wife, the husband. Um, you know, I, I I mean, I would I had been married fifteen years when I did this. We've been married forty three years now. And, um, and I, I went through this and I, when I went through this, I didn't have nobody walking with me. And this is sometimes it was a struggle of why am I doing this? Is it, is it worth it? But as I finished the course, the greatest thing that happened to me was I realized that I made it in my mind, God, for, I want to make this a commitment to you that forever I can live a happy, blessed life uh, by separating myself in this moment. And when we got through with this blessing, um, uh, this 40 days, and, and obviously go through the 43, um, it was amazing. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we've got older now, and I, my daughter and them struggled with it as well. So I really encouraged them. But what was cool, what she told me was the most important thing was, I was an encourager to her every day. And every day I walked with her through this 40 days. And I continue to walk with her through it. And this is this is funny. This happened seven years ago with them. My daughter, after June the fifth, uh, asked me. We had a little struggle there, and there's some frustration. She said, "Dad, we want to go through this 40 day, but we want you and mom to go through it with us." And I went, "Oh Lord God, here we go again." <laughs> and so I just, you know what I did though? Here we are for the love of family, and for the love of my lineage. And for the love of my grandchildren, oh, man. I said, I'm going to jump on to this. And we completed it. We just completed it. And my daughter looked at me and said, Dad, I loved it more this round than I did the first time. <laughs> and you know what? This, this, Once you realize that this really, you know, people do Lent, Dr. Roush, you know about Lent. Yes. And that's yes. a separation yes. of sacrifice 40 yes. days before yes. Easter. And so when we, we begin to do, this is nothing new, but boy, life, salvation, uh, guys, you're talking about a spiritual part of your life. I mean, it, it's brought life to, I mean, I've been fired up this whole week. Most of the people have been around me this past week and realized we had just finished up and we were excited and pumped spiritually because it brings a spiritual anointing on you, Dr. Rouse. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I don't recommend you doing it four or five times, but uh, I'm, for my family, I did it. And God Almighty, uh, that was a, actually we loved it this time more around, knowing we were as a family doing this. And my grandson wow. is on purity pledge too, but he committed to everything again. So we're all riding this ship together, guys. This is called perfected, uh, a perfected, uh, a blessed central family. A fruitful, multiply, take dominion, bless central family. This is what brings anointing to Christian pastors. When I said down, they said, you got to be kidding me. You're doing this? I said, it's through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the only way that you're going to do it. The Bible says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes. It's after that. When that 40 days is over with, it's like the Holy Spirit just falls upon you like a bucket, a five-gallon bucket of water. And you go, wow, the anointing's all over me. And I'm pumped. <laughs> Dr. Jenkins, I, wow. I've been blessed to, to see at least one member of eight generations in my, my lineage, and five are still represented on earth today. In this restorative process, we have more than a hope for what I look at in my flesh, but it's about a lineage. How does this really work for restoration? Thank you, Dr. Dr. Abernathy, for your heartfelt uh, testimony of your victorious experience. You're experiencing this, and Dr. Rouse, this is so wonderful for ACLC. I also want to thank, there's many other pastors here, like Bishop Petra, Dr. Bishop Petra Kidwell, and also uh, Role, and also I see 
also Reverend Bampo, and also Reverend Ken Alexander's here. Uh, Dr. Madeline Clark Alexander's blessed husband. I'm just so grateful, Reverend Alexander, and, and all of the pastors that are here. I see so many more. Miss Reverend Alice Babber Banks and Dr. Prophetess Glenda Phillips Lee, and oh my gosh, this is real. I didn't know you were all here till I got off of the main program and could see the pictures. Uh, how does this work? Well, I think Reverend Abernathy really explained it deeply and very well. I think that once we step into that realm of lineage as a couple, now that's, that doesn't change anything about what Jesus did for us. It just builds on it. It just expands it. Jesus already paid the price. All the salvation's there. It's already contained. But it was never given to the couple and to the family. And that's why our families have been in so much trouble in this world. And this isn't a new phenomenon. This has been going on throughout history. But now a new thing. God is doing a new thing. And it's a, it has to do with Jesus' promise to return. And when we become that couple together, and that covering of the Holy Spirit, then every step you take, God can receive it. God can, can really receive it as a blessed family. And then you're also passing it on to the children, the grandchildren, like Reverend Abernathy's done with his family. You know that Reverend Abernathy has blessed now over 3,600 couples, 3,600 couples. And once that condition is made, Dr. Petroli knows about this. Once that condition is made, she says it like your DNA changes. Well, you know, your physical DNA doesn't change. But she's right. She's talking about spiritual DNA. All of a sudden, you know, God has made you clean as a family. And remember, when Peter didn't want to eat, uh, what God told him to eat on the roof, he, he felt the law of, of the Old Testament ruled. And yeah, uh, God told Peter, do not say that which I make clean is unclean. God has the power to make a clean family and a family that doesn't have a claim on it from the dark side. That's why our families get torn up. Even though God claimed us as individuals through the grace of Jesus Christ, we're claimed. So that won't change as long as you remain faithful. But that doesn't cover the family. But this does. This covers the family. We're going to end divorce. How do you end divorce? Yes, counseling and all those things are very important. That's not enough to remove that claim. That claim has to be, that claim has to be broken. That chain has to be broken. We have to really break the yoke, right, of, of the dark world and come into the light as a family. So that's how I see it, Dr. Rouse. I'm just, I see you and Marie in that light. I see Minister Rako and I, you know, pastors, we are experiencing, my wife are, and I are experiencing an incredible love with our family, with everybody, but especially together. We've been together 39 years now, going on 40. I want to be like Reverend Abernathy. I want to get on over that hill. It's beautiful. But we're experiencing more love now. That's what I see also, because God doesn't have to hesitate, you know, because your couple is secured. You're never going to break apart. And that's one of the things that we vow with the blessing is that no divorce and no adultery. The only thing can break it up is if we're unfaithful. And even that can be restored, but I don't want to even talk about that. Once you remain faithful, it just keeps the light just keeps growing. The love keeps growing. So I hope that helped. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Thank you, Dr. Abernathy. Thank you all who are on the call. Thank you. Young Soon, thank you, oh. Dr. Alexander. Thank all of you. I invite you, let us pray. God, your parental love is so yes. amazing. You have seen us through, but not us alone. For from great, great, grandparents and before to our grandchildren, great grandchildren and those yet to come. You've allowed many on this call to see into our lineage by flesh. 
And now you offer all of us to experience the great connectedness, the eternal existence of our loved and our spiritual lineage. We thank you. We thank you tonight for Dr. Jenkins who has digested this so profoundly to feed it to us that we may all digest the restoration process that you have blessed us with as the blessing and not just for ourselves and not just for America, but for all of the world. You have us on the course of revival. Continue to bless chosen, continue to bless all of the affiliates that have united with true parents. And then bless us to be a blessing unto all of thy people who will bring complete, total joy to your heart as you seek for us to have total salvation, meaning no one left behind. These things we pray in the powerful names that are given unto you, to Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, true parents, as blessed families, and Luan and Marie Rouse, amen and are you. Hey, listen, you want more? Stay right where you are as Reverend Mark Hernandez comes to offer you an opportunity to ask for more. Reverend Hernandez. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again so much, Dr. Jenkins, for a fantastic presentation. And the commentary tonight has just been just off the charts. Thank you, Dr. Abernathy and Dr. Rouse uh, for setting the stage spiritually. Dr. Harris, thank you so much. I mean, Dr. Alexander, <laughs> I'm in that transition too. God bless you, God bless you. <clears throat> um, so again, please, uh, at this time, I don't see any questions in the chat, but if you have questions that you'd like to pose to our uh, present presenters or myself, please uh, put them in the chat at the moment. Um, it's amazing, just this morning, I happened to be reading uh, just a brief quote from Mother Moon, uh, kind of really relating to what uh, you taught about today, uh, Dr. Jenkins, and especially what you were commenting about, Dr. Abernathy, about the state of the family and how it took time for, you know, you've been so honest, talking so, how it took time for you to see the whole picture of the restorative power of the blessing of marriage. And uh, in this quote, it's from 1995, August 23rd. The reason people strive for everlasting, unchanging love between a husband and wife, yet can't seem to achieve it, is Adam and Eve's original separation from God, the fall, which was caused by false love. The reason the original sin is inherited throughout the generations, and the reason we, in what the Bible calls the last days, are witnessing wide-scale immorality and family breakdown is due to this. What God dislikes the most is when a person goes against the law of love and, <clears throat> and becomes immoral. These phenomena are more fearful than starvation, war, and any disease. Why is that? These problems are not just our problems today. They are the problems that will destroy humanity's hope in future generations. Today's immorality has direct consequences for our descendants. Immorality, sexual promiscuity, and divorce are grave mistakes that violate heavenly law. It's been on my mind, actually, I read it yesterday, and it's been on my mind since this morning, and then just kind of re-emphasized through uh, the precious words that were spoken tonight. The, the grave need, you know, and how God answered that need, how Jesus answered that need through anointing Father and Mother Moon to provide a way for, you know, the couple, the family to return to God's bosom and under God's uh, covering. 
And it's so interesting how we talk, you know, just one of these common things we say all the time is that it takes two to tango, you know, it, it, that, but yet we haven't thought about salvation in those terms. We haven't thought about really restoring what went wrong in the garden uh, because it's not been really clear to us, you know, and as you were saying earlier, Dr. Abernethy, the blessings themselves of God, of fruitfulness, right, of multiplication, or multiplying and having dominion, those were not very clear to us, what it really takes to become a fruitful man or a fruitful woman. So I'm just so grateful for the kind of teaching we've had today. Um, but I was struck by that, that quote that I read uh, yesterday morning, and, and it's been ringing in my, in my thoughts over and over again. Um, and I'm so proud of the American Clergy Leadership Conference's clergy, uh, such as you on the call today, because you've hearkened to this call, you realize that, yes, you know, two people tangoed in the garden. Two people took us off course, not just one, not just Eve, nor just Adam, but God's original design for this amazing couple, you know, went off course. So it's really the marriage blessing that brings us back, really, and is able to uh, reverse the curse, as uh, Archbishop Stallings likes to say, reversing the curse. Um, I don't see any questions. Perhaps you've been so thorough, Dr. Jenkins, and the commentary has been so wonderful tonight. Um, yeah, we have a, a just amazing uh, clergy on the call, and I want to thank each one of you for just spiritually also, your presence really buoys the presenter. And, uh, you know, it, it brings us together in one spirit. Well, <laughs> wow. I guess uh, everyone might want an early exit. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't see any, any questions in the chat. And I want to thank everyone. One thing everyone. I would like to say, um, pa uh, Pastor um, Hernandez, and I'm sure Dr. Abenathy and Dr. Jenkins and Dr. Rouse would agree with me that in these chosens that we're talking about um, the marriage blessing and everything, it would be nice to see more of the wives sitting with the husbands in these chosen uh, things as we're doing this. I know we have the, the special one that we do on Wednesday, but these chosens that we're talking more about the husbands and the wives, I know, um, as, as he likes to call me, the senior bishop for the city of Worcester, um, and I call him the junior bishop, uh, Banfo, he sent me a, a little message stating that he was glad to see my wife sitting next to me. And I just personally think, come in the picture so that they can see you. I think it would be, and I'm sure Dr. Abenaki, you would agree with me, that it would be nice to see more husbands and wives joining this together on Mondays for the chosen that, you know, as we're talking about the husbands and wives, you know, coming together, it would be nice to see the husbands and the wives joining as this goes on each time. Dr. Rouse, am I right or am I wrong? I mean, I am the yes. little man in the toilet. Pastor pole. Mike, we heard you call. We heard yes. you call us. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm the little man in the toilet. It's like there's an hour in two different rooms. Dr. Rouse, I just think that it would be nice to see more of of the marriage couples together. I know as Dr. Um, as Dr. Uh, Abernathy was um, speaking. Look at that, you got Dr. Kidwell rolling. And oh, yeah. Amen, yeah. here we go. All right. yeah. Couples, I don't want yeah. to get anybody in trouble. I don't want to get anybody, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but it would just be nice, you know, this is beautiful because this is what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, this is what we're talking about is uniting together. And it's nice to see the husbands and wives you know, come together like this. So Dr. Ross, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry if I stepped on toes or anything, but this is what I like to see. You know, we're talking about marriage blessings and everything. And this is what I'd really would like to see more of. Hey, Brother Mike, when you see, when you see me, you see my wife. 
Oh, well, yeah, amen. I yeah. Here. I got my wife right here. Here she is. But she just put she just put it. She's here. Bless you, Reverend. She's good. Hey, she's taking care of the house. We got to make sure we get that's that right. taken care of. That's right. That's right. So say hello, honey. I didn't call you. Yeah, Marie is always here in the background if she's not beside me. So you're right past the mic. Wives, say hello. Come show yourselves whatever you want to do to let everyone know we are one. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Man, you're Thank welcome. You, Thank you, Pastor Mike. God bless you. Oh, God bless God you bless as you. well. You might see that Yuri's wearing the apron. She's got the apron on. Because <laughs> over here, it, over here, it starts at five o'clock, and right now it's about six fifteen. So uh, yeah, she's putting the finishing touches on dinner, but. Uh, the Wednesday program, we're finished with dinner, so we're here together. But uh, yeah, but sometimes I I pick I do dinner, but not on Monday nights. Uh, well, God bless you, everyone, for joining us. Heart is through his tummy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to see Max with you, Patra. <laughs> it's wonderful. It was wonderful. God bless you all. Have a great week. Thank you so much. Amen. See you next God week. bless everyone. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Family's all here. Family's all here. That's what Pastor Mike asked for. The family's all here. God bless you. Hey, 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 h